that electronically on my computer. I just couldn't yes. figure out any way to get a, a, any enforcement on that. Well, you're you're the only one that can enforce it. You have to send a copy to them and, to, and ask them if they recognize that document. Are they going to respond to you and say no? If they do and say that, great, uh, especially if the U.S. is a signatory of it, then you sue them. You sue them because the United, Na the United States is obligated to obey that document if they're a signatory to it. You can also quote the Bible, and please do, especially if you're going to be going into, into civil court, because that's a common law court. So the problem is what you have to do is you have to learn to start contacting the state, telling them to return your children because they have no contract with you. When they don't reply, you start to issue them fines and let them know how much it's going to cost for continuing to deprive you of your children, and then you sue them in civil court, and you use things like the Universal Dec or sorry, the Universal uh, uh, sorry, the United Nations uh, uh, thing on the, the the rights of the child. You add that to an exhibit. You add that as yeah. an exhibit to your lawsuit because you're going to be quoting that in part of your affidavit. Your affidavit that's stating that the state has no standing or claim to your children and you sue the shit out of them. And again, the affidavit is the plain statement of facts. The damages are what, what is the result of what happened, which is the, the loss of your children, and the remedy is their return, and the fees for them non-complying with your order to return your children. Yeah, you and, and, are the court, you are the sovereign, you issue orders, you're the administrator. You send them a letter, and you order them to return your friggin' children. That's it. Yeah, and then the of course they also destroy absolutely obliterated a completely successful career I had by and that's another damaging a hundred percent court. Yeah, that's it. And and you know I, I just want to be I just want to be left alone, but I I I, I need some resources to function with. You're not going to you're not going to be left alone until you enforce your rights. Yeah, that's when you'll be left alone because until you do that, they don't give a shit. Okay, so there's. I go to this treaty, and I'm uh, filing it in uh, a civil court. Yeah, you want to get a civil claim, a, a, a statement of claim together to take into civil court that has an affidavit built into it, where you're when you're suing the state, an affidavit. You want to make sure that's in your statement of claim, and in the affidavit, you're going to be, you know, when when you when you state certain points about both your children, like uh, your your rights over your own children then you, you have in brackets Exhibit A, and Exhibit A in your lawsuit should be that document. Just go online and download a, a bunch of, of statements of claims that have been filed into the courts to see what the structure is of a statement of claim, and then start yeah. to build your own using that as an example. Okay? Okay, and, and the affidavit, has you were mentioning before, has three different uh, parts, basically? Well, no, the, the affidavit is one part of your statement of claim. A statement of claim or a claim period has three parts. That's the statement of facts, which is your affidavit. Then yeah. it has the injury that happened as a result There's of the statement damages. of facts, and then the, and then the remedy, which is the what remedy. is it going to take to settle the damages. That's the three components. If you have those three components, you file that properly into civil court, you will win. Okay. Um, the, the, um, I, I can certainly go ahead and process that. I've kind of lost faith of getting anything, any. You've uh, lost faith because all, you, have, you haven't done anything yet. You've been operating in the private, trying to negotiate. Oh, you state. wouldn't believe what I've done. Oh, I, I believe <laughs> it. I'm helping somebody right now who's been doing it for four years in Canada up against Child Family Services. And as soon as she started doing what we told her to do, the spark started to fly and people started to shit their pants. They, they, they've already used this, this, this uh, statute that it did. they call it. Is, it's a statute. It has no force and effect on you. And if you think it does, and you ask them exactly where does this have any force and effect on me? Yeah. That's the only the, question you need to ask them. It's not a law. It's a statute. Some assholes in an, in an office somewhere passed it. How does that make it applicable to you? So you ask them that and do it on the record with a registered mail filing. Yeah. Okay. The, uh, I've, I've been fighting them for, for a uh, almost 10 years now. You haven't, well, it's doubtful you've been fighting them. I think you've been arguing with them, but you haven't done anything properly yet. So do do what I told you to do and get it into civil court and file it properly and look at some examples online. Okay. All right? Yep. All right, great. Thank yeah, you thanks. so much. We're going to move on to the guest number 16. There you Hi. Go. Hi. Did Hi. you have a question? Hi. 
Yeah, it's Nicole in Kelowna, Canada. Hi, Dean. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Oh, kudos, kudos, kudos to all of you. You know, you're honorable and we'll all prevail because of this. You really, really empower us. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing, breaking some ground rules over here. And I, I, I think I am. Yeah, while well, I am, it's in court. And I will be making some precedent, some precedents if I am successful. Now it's it's not a it's not a bank. It's a, a computer company that gave me my mortgage. Okay. And what I do is I challenge the validity of the alleged contract. Um, I I put in a civil claim. I did my three administrative remedies. I did the notice to proof of legal standing. I did the notice of fault and opportunity to cure. I did the notice of dishonor and default. And I didn't perfect, I did, and, I, and I'm an avid uh, Winston Shrout. Uh, I mean, I love the guy. But I love you, too, because you say it in a Canadian way. Yes. So it's better for, for us here, us Canucks, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, uh, simply put is that um, the petitioner, because now they put in a petition, after my civil claim, I knew I had a year to do it, and they knew that I wasn't going to do it right away. I, a- I asked them to produce the instrument of indebtedness, like that Jersey girl, right? The mortgage document. Uh, yeah, the mortgage document. So, therefore, there's no competent evidence that any party is the holder of the alleged note of the, and the true holder in due course. Yeah, you want to know who the holder in due course is. Yeah, proof of perfection of the security is by actual possession of the security, right? Well, yeah, because if, if you're going to pay a debt, you want to make sure you're paying it to the holder in due course yeah, so, you can, so, you can get a, can... so you can get a paid receipt that shows the, and get your original document back. Otherwise, yeah, anybody but... could collect on that in the future. That's right. But you know they bifurcated it, they sold it. You know they, they chopped that, that puppy up, right? Oh, who knows I what mean... they did with it. Right. Did so you there's have a also... question? Yeah, there's also an inference of inequality of obligations where the petitioner loaned the respondent's own credit and is demanding money of exchange, right? Yeah, you guys just exchange money, if they uh, a species of money. Yeah, That's- which you've been saying all, all along this talk. Now, what do I do? To do it simply, should I just say present me with the original charge, the original note? Present me, present me with the original note, yeah, the, 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 debt, the, the, the debt obligation. Pre- present me with the original document that gave rise to this obligation. Where's and the again, original? Where's, yeah, and then again, where's the other side's statement of defense? They have none. I mean, like, how do I go about, like, I'm going to get a hearing here soon. Yeah. And uh, at the hearing, you know the judge is not going to allow this to fly. Um, well, mean, this case, so, so the, other part, the other party has filed no statement of defense? Yeah, they said that I'm full of baloney. Or, you, or you, you're the one, you're the one that's and defending. They, and they want to foreclose it. No, they're the petitioner. You're the okay, so they're the plaintiff. The you're you're the defendant. Okay, so it's up to you yeah. then, basically, to defend your position and say that they're not producing the original note. Yeah, How can I? And I've, so I've done all that, and now I'm I'm waiting for a date here. Yep. And you, but I, you know, the judge is going to kibosh this somehow. I don't think I so. Mean, have Have you Have you motioned to the court yet? Have you motioned the court to dismiss their uh, to, to to strike their claim uh, with prejudice because they they haven't even proven an, a damage. They haven't proven that you owe them money. No, in my response, I just opposed and do not consent to every each and every point that they've had. I've used some legal basis, some legal basis, some rules out of their own books, yeah. the Bills of Exchange Act, all kinds of stuff. But yep. uh, you know, what? You, are they going? They're not going to listen to this, are they? Uh, of course, they're going to listen to it. I think there's a uh, the, what is it? The, uh, the the Fair Debt Collections Act. I think is. I think that's the name of it. I that's could be wrong correct. on that. There's there's that's points correct. in there that say that basically uh, unless they're going to produce the, uh, the 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 original debt, you're under no obligation to pay it. There's something in there about that. And if you put the, if, you, if you were to put that in your statement of defense, um, have you have you contacted them outside of the court and asked them to produce this note? Uh, originally, the the company, not the lawyers. Yes, I did. Okay, then you want to do it again with the lawyers now, because when you contact a lawyer now and you do a registered mail, uh, you can default okay. them. Do it again. And state okay. in the in the contact when you phone when you contact their lawyer, sorry, by registered mail, say I contacted them more than a year ago and asked them to produce the original note and they refused. So right. I'm asking again, where is it? Because it's not in your statement of claim. Where is it? Okay. And by rights, everything can be done by email now because every everything can be tracked. Yeah, it's all admissible. I, I like faxing yeah. things actually, and then calling down there and yeah. asking if they yeah. receive the fax. Faxes yeah, are great. I get it. Yeah, I get the um, the okay confirmed sent there. Yep. 
Yeah. Yep. Okay, yep. So, so you guys all listen up in Kelowna, British Columbia. This is going down soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get your process right and you'll win. Super. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to who's next? KMA Club. Hi, Dean. Go ahead. Did you have a question? Dean, Dean. Hello. Hello. <laughs> How you doing, Dean? Not too bad yourself. Oh, pretty good. I'm a truck driver, too, and I got a ticket, and the cop didn't even have me sign it. Okay. And, and I got an extension because I was going to file the stuff in there that Rod Class was filed into his suit. I don't know if you heard about that in North Carolina. No. In his lawsuit, he's got in there that they cannot take your license. They cannot do anything with your license because they are not part of the FMCSA, who is the you know the federal DOT. That's who is in charge of issuing license, so only the issuer of the license can take the license. They're just contracted to uh, take your picture and pass them out, and that's it. And in that also, he says uh, uh, in there, he claims that uh, if they are not, if the, if the police officer that pulls you over is not uh, FMCSA DOT certified, that they cannot pull over. Uh, a big truck, uh, okay. uh, some, somebody in commerce. Okay. So I was waiting to file that in there. So I'm wondering now. Uh, I I would say you should send a quick little a quick letter to the to the police uh, that that issued the ticket, uh-huh. and ask them to provide the written delegated authority to enforce the statute against your license. Is what you're saying is they, if they lack the authority, then you ask them for proof of their written delegated authority to even issue that ticket. Okay, and because he didn't get my signature, signature, doesn't that mean something too? Um, if he didn't, well, I mean, no, we, we're not forced to sign our tickets up here in Canada either. That uh, if it's left open, but uh, then you can also use the argument of uh, if you, if you don't sign it, you could just write refuse. You could accept it for value, sign above them. You could just refuse it outright. I like to put uh, refused uh, or dishonored by non-acceptance and red marker right across the ticket and send it back to them without signing it. Um, refused by administration. There's a million different ways uh, things you can write on it. As long as you're make, making the point that you're refusing whatever you're presented, I'm refusing okay. this. No, thank you. Piss off. So okay, that, yeah, because the, the main thing, like that guy was saying a while ago, the main thing we got to do is keep the points off. Yes, that's that's the, that's the problem with you guys because you do have to keep your commercial licenses, technically speaking, just because of the companies you're working for. Um, and so and that's the thing. If they lack the authority, which is what the argument you were talking about there at the start was, then you may want to contact them and ask them for, for proof of their written delegated authority to issue that ticket. If they don't have any written delegated authority to do it, then the ticket's void and right from the start. Well, I did bring that up with the uh, the deputy that wrote me the ticket. And yep. I said, if you don't have the FMCSA certification, you can't even pull me over. He said, yes, I can too. I pulled you over for a traffic ticket. I said, that's just it. You can't do that. Well, okay, now, yeah, what, what, what's the, yeah, um, yeah, that gets into the argument about what's traffic and stuff like that and what they have jurisdiction over. So, it all, well, you, know gonna, what it, you, you know what it all boils down to? It all boils down to how much do you want to fight? How much is it worth to you? Sometimes, is a, is a ticket just worth paying? But if well, that's all, it, if, it's, uh, if it's points, I mean, you could always, uh, oh, geez, I mean, yeah, you, you guys are going to have to try some of your own remedy on that. But uh, you could start with the written delegated authority or just refusing it outright. But you might end up uh, having to go to court and uh, defending your position with just saying, well, no, I, 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 I refuse to contract with these people. They have no jurisdiction over me. Yeah, well, that's that's basically what I was going to try. Yeah. And uh, basically do it like you just now told that lady. Uh, go in there and uh, as administrator and tell them, okay, uh, I don't, uh, you haven't been given consent. You don't have the the, the jurisdiction, and so I, I demand that you don't don't say that to the don't say that to the court though. The court does have jurisdiction. It's the people coming against you that don't have jurisdiction to drag you in there. Okay, that's uh, a very important part. People have to realize people are going into these courts and they're challenging the court's jurisdiction. The court has jurisdiction to hear whatever your adversary is bringing in there. The problem is your adversary doesn't have jurisdiction to bring you in there. You're fighting the wrong people. Don't fight the court. Fight the person bringing you in there. Okay. Okay. I understand that. Yeah, that's very important. And you can't challenge jurisdiction in a court anyways because a a court can't make a decision on its own jurisdiction. No man can rule in his own cause. 
and you're just going to 